This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE, which stands for Fan Edition. So much like the S20 FE phone, which was 90% of a Galaxy S20 at a considerably lower price tag, this is trying to do the same thing. Now that's a tall order to follow. Does it succeed? We're going to find out now. So this is a fairly premium 12.4 inch Android 11 tablet with one UI 3.1. So that is the same size screen and the same resolution as you would get with the Tab S7 Plus, which starts at $850. But this one starts at $530. So this is a significant cost saving. If you want to give it parity with storage, 128 gigs, then that would be $600 this model. It's 6.3 millimeters thin and it's an aluminum design casing. It's available in four different colors and it weighs 608 grams so it's very light as well. And yes it works with the keyboard covers that are already on the market from Samsung. The book cover which is the more expensive one that's $230 that came out for the Tab S7 Plus but also with the newer less expensive $160 model that lacks a trackpad but is also a lot lighter. So for those of you who aren't using Samsung DeX particularly probably you're okay without having a trackpad on and just using the included S Pen, yay, which you can attach somewhat assuredly magnetically up top, but there's also a strip on the back, just like there is for the regular Tab S7 family. This is not the Bluetooth enabled pen. They're all Wacom EMR, which doesn't require any power to work as a pen with pressure sensitivity and tilt. Uh, but if you want the Bluetooth functions for like triggering presentations and all that sort of thing, that's where the difference is. And speaking of doing creative things, a shout out to our sponsor Skillshare and their online community for creatives where you can learn about drawing, painting, photography, and even some surprising things like learning to speak German as well. They have thousands of courses geared towards, well, mostly creative folks. For example, want to get better at portraits for Instagram? Who doesn't want to be hot on Insta, right? Jessica Kobisi's class, Portrait Photography, Shoot and Edit Instagram Worthy Shots, is one I really enjoyed. From planning the shoot to getting your gear ready to shooting techniques for street, sunset shots, all that sort of thing. I really love your tips on how to choose the right clothing colors for your subjects and also flattering poses and using natural lighting too. There are courses for all levels. Are you a beginner? Are you an advanced learner? Are you somewhere in the middle? They've got courses for you and they have an online community too so you can get inspiration and support from other people who are learning the same stuff that you are. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get one month of Skillshare free so you can start exploring your creativity today. And now back to our review. So this is sounding pretty good, right? And goodness knows the Tab S7 Plus is an expensive tablet that's meant to compete with the iPad Pro, also an expensive line of tablets, right? So what did they cut here to drop the price tag? You do get a 2K display, 2560 by 1600, so 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And it's a very nice display that reaches nearly 600 nits, but it's not OLED, unlike the S7 Plus. So I know fan edition, you might say, hey, we fans love OLED, we want that, but you're not going to get it here. Instead of the Snapdragon 865, you're getting the Snapdragon 750G, which isn't as fast a processor. Now, it's perfectly adequate for everyday use and even for playing games, like I played Call of Duty Mobile, which is pretty demanding and it was just fine. Uh, but if you get into the whole multitasking thing, multi-window, all that sort of thing, and running decks, then you'll notice it's not as fast as the S7 Plus or multitasking on an iPad Pro, which is a super fast tablet. That said, we also have the lower end model and that one has four gigs of RAM. If you go with the higher capacity storage, you can get it with 128 or 256 gig. Then it'll have six gigs of RAM instead of our carrier version, which is four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. It is available with 5G. In fact, there you go. So ours happens to be on T-Mobile and data speeds are fine on it. Not as many bands as you would see on a phone, but I'm adequate coverage, certainly. Or you can just get the regular Wi-Fi model if you want. You do get a GPS on board, Wi-Fi 5, not 6. I know Samsung specs page might be wrong about that, but we have Wi-Fi 5 on board and Bluetooth as well, as you'd hope. This has 2D facial recognition, the kind that's not very secure, but is very convenient, but there's no fingerprint scanner on board. So for those of you who like that for Samsung Pay and all that sort of thing, you're gonna have to enter your PIN instead. Uh, that I'm kind of surprised at, honestly, in this price range, that they didn't throw in a fingerprint scanner, even, you know, one on the side. I don't mean an under display or something like that. This has two stereo speakers. They're AKG branded versus the four you'll get on the 
standard S7 models, but they sound pretty good. I, for a tablet this size, you expect some bass. There is some bass. It gets pretty loud. It will distort if, distort if you put it at max volume, but pretty much what doesn't in the world of tablets. Okay, maybe except an iPad. The S Pen on board is fantastic as always. Wacom EMR is just lovely stuff. Very competitive with the Apple Pencil. And for those of you who use Wacom Cintiq products, you're familiar with the technology. Uh, it's better than Wacom AES or Entrig, now called Microsoft Pen Protocol. It feels very natural. The lines are just silky and flowing. The pressure sensitivity of 4,096 pressure levels is very good. And you do have support for tilt. And there's a decent selection of art programs, including Metabank Paint now that's available for Android tablets, and certainly enough for those of you who are budding artists. So for those of you who are note takers, you'll absolutely love this. Very nice experience. For those of you who are artists, I think you're also going to love it too because, wow, it's just an excellent responsive experience. The only thing that's not as lovable is the very glossy display. There's some reflections there, but mostly it's a little bit slippery. The pen tip is has a reasonable amount of grip though, but you could always put a matte screen protector on it if you wanted it to. So for creatives, looking for to spend closer to 500 not closer to a thousand dollars and you prefer android over ios well yeah or ipad os yeah good stuff for the camera part of creativity well you know you could say well it is a big tablet so whatever but it's you've got a five megapixel front facing camera an eight megapixel rear camera that's also passable it's not great um if you're buying this for mobile t photography purposes it might not be the apex of things hopefully you have a phone that's pretty good at that it has a night mode. It's not particularly good at that. But if you're taking pictures in decent lighting, be it indoors or outdoors, the shots are pretty sharp and pretty colorful. So it's not terrible stuff either. Like I said, you've got Samsung DeX on board as well. And given the fact that this is a tablet, you really don't even have to plug in an external monitor, though you could if you wanted to. But just attach the keyboard, one of the keyboard cases, and you have the option of automatically running DeX if you want, or you could do it manually, whatever. But for those who aren't familiar, you can see it on screen. It turns it into something like a desktop operating system with floating resizable windows and all that sort of thing. I know a lot of people are fans of DeX, and I can see why. So battery life, this has the same 10,900 milliamp battery that you'll find on the Tab S7 Plus. That's a huge battery. And there's a charger in the box, hey? Unlike Samsung's high-end phones, you still get a charger. The bad news is, though, even if it supports 45-watt super-fast charging and 25-watt fast charging, you get the 15-watt charger in the box. You can just do the math. That is an immense battery, three, about three times the size which you find in many phones, and you're going to be charging it at the slowest possible rate. So you get a faster charger if you can. It'll take about three hours to go from 10% to full with the charger that's included. If you go for the super-fast 45-watt charger, it cuts it in half to about an hour and a half. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 FE, or Fan Edition. And honestly, if it wasn't for the baggage that the FE moniker brings, where we expect to have just about everything we got in the standard edition, uh, this is a nice tablet for $250, $300 less than the S7 Plus. So in that way, I can't fault it. You've got a reasonably fast processor, even if it's not top-notch. You have a very good display. It's not OLED, but this is a very high-quality 2K resolution display with great colors good brightness and all that sort of thing. And you got the S Pen, which attaches pretty securely on the back, not so much on the top, but whatever. Really good experience for those of you who want to try art on an Android tablet, or if you want to do note taking. And uh, the keyboard case, you can either go with Samsung Zone, and $160 is a little bit expensive given the spend for this itself. But of course you can use Bluetooth keyboards and all that sort of thing. I'm sure there'll be some third parties available as well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.